I want to talk to you right now about my emergency fishing kit. This is, well, you know I'm a prepper. I believe in being prepared for any sort of emergency or disaster. I try to prepare not for one specific thing, but in general. Anything from tornado, fire, loss of job, loss of income, to um, all-out nuclear war, zombie apocalypse, whatever you want to call it, whatever comes along. It could be a hurricane, which I've experienced two of in New York. And I've seen disastrous results, and I've lost my home and my, my business. And I, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. And... So this is a fishing kit I've had for quite a few years now and you can tell it's used, it's been around. I don't know if it shows up on the camera very well but it's dirty, it's dinged up, it's been around. This fishing kit has caught me many countless fish. I can't even tell you how many. But the importance of a fishing kit probably cannot be understated. I lost my job once and had nothing. I actually, through the years being a PHP programmer, website designer, um, and uh, search engine optimization expert in a failing economy, uh, you do happen to get and lose jobs quickly because uh, it is the first thing to go in a company, is the marketing department. Extra baggage, dump them. So, I actually had this fishing kit one time in a pond, and I was fishing for food, because I had nothing. And, it's, I just want to show you what I carry in my car at any given time. Now, this is my, my car kit, alright? This is actually my main grab kit when I go somewhere, when I go camping, when I go hiking, um, if I can afford the weight. But you'll see it's got a convenient carry handle on the case. It's got a uh, inches up to 15 inches uh, measurement, which is good because you have, as long as this economy is still going and the government is still in order, you've got to measure your, your fish and, uh, and make sure you're getting a legal size limit. Now, this is maxed. Okay, I am a heavy fisherman. This thing is loaded. And I like to fish a variety of fish. And in a separate video, I'm going to cover various fishing equipment for various types of environments. River fishing is not the same as pond fishing, which is not the same as lake fishing, which is not the same as creek and stream, and which is absolutely different from ocean fishing. And what I have here is a very well-rounded inland fishing kit and then again you've got every different type of fish requires different type of equipment so that's why you see here a very well well-rounded range of equipment I can handle everything here except for uh, musky sturgeon and pike uh, a pike will sever your line in an instant so that's another video if people show enough interest in this this kit and in this video I'll cover uh, I'll do a video series on the various fishing methods and the various fishing types of equipment so I'll go and I'll do pond fishing and I'll show you what's best for what types of fish we'll cover bluegill, sunfish, perch, bass and uh, and, and everything and uh, we'll do some trout fish and we'll talk about trout fishing which is a whole different story in itself I don't have any trout gear here so I just want to show you what I carry in my car at any given time, okay? Now you've got the, the rod and reel, it's a takedown rod and reel, and you've got all kinds of gear here. This is a four piece takedown rod and reel, I'm not going to show you now because it won't fit in the camera, but I have used this heavily, and you've seen it in some of my videos in the past probably. Um, then you've got bobbers for pond fishing and lake fishing. You've got the rattle lures. Bass, oh, sharp. Bass love noise. Anything that'll attract a bass, uh, it's, they love the noise, which would scare other fish. So 
Then I keep extra, I've got extra um, hooks and uh, little lead crimp on weights in here. I've got extra, um, actually is that a perch harness? Very, very important. There's a, um, there's a, I call it a perch harness because it's, it's called a crappie rig, but it's, I call it a perch harness because that's what I use it for. This is a big, long, long, about, it's probably about three foot long, um, line to at least two and a half to three foot long with this bar that comes out and then a hook dangles off of it. And a bar comes out over here and a hook dangles off of it. So it's a long dangly thing. And you put a big old heavy lead sinker on the bottom and you cast this out into the lake and you put crawlers on that or minnows and you start nailing the fish right and left. So then I've got some various bass attracting minnows and then I've got the tiny tiny fish. Sometimes if the big fish aren't biting on fake lures you've got to catch a little fish so you can use it to catch a big fish. And I've got these really tiny little lures. I don't know if that's sorry. I've got two cats in here. They're going wild. Um, there's different colors. They were on discount, so I never pass up a good deal. Um, again, for little fish, medium to little fish, you want to have smaller hooks. And hey, if you're hungry and you're starving out there, I'll eat a little fish before I die. And then there's your. Oops, there's a hole in that. Yeah, I can't have that around the cats. You know, time to replace that bag. It burst on about the bottom. I've had this for years, this bag. Anyway, there's uh, some different various sized sinkers. And we've got... <laughs> and it depends on the type of weather. Here's a kin. Depending on the weather, uh, whether it's cloudy or sunny, and depending on the temperature, Different things will work and different things won't. So anyway, this is one of my all-time best. This is a pike slammer and a, and a, uh, a bass lure. This is a good old frog with uh, two hooks on it. I have a fish eye still on there. So that they slam that heavily. But then sometimes they don't. Like the pond here where I'm living, they don't touch that. They won't go for that for anything. Here's another. This is for big lakes. The bass slam that big time. The little mouse, swimming mouse with a tail, they slam that. In this pond, they won't go to near it. Now, big lakes and ponds for the bass, I've got the jitterbug, which has a rattle inside, and two hooks on the bottom, and a big old spoon, and he makes a loud popping noise and a lot of, no a lot of splash when he goes through the top of the water. That's a big bass catcher right there. And then there's my hula hopper. These are staples in my fishing kit. The hula popper, I should say. Another thing that makes a lot of noise and bubbles as it goes, and it's got a, a, a rubbery tail and two big hooks on it. I won't go into a lot of detail now. Again, as I said, uh, I just want to show you what stays in my car at all times in a post-collapse scenario, or I break down, or I'm lost, or I'm stranded. I've got my car bug out bag, and I've got the means to feed myself. Being in North America, especially upstate New York, and anywhere between New York and Michigan where I drive all the time, there's so much fresh water, I think it would be hard to die of hunger if you had a fishing kit with you. So I've got all these rubber worms. Again, I always buy them on discount. Um, I don't have as much luck with the rubber worms as a lot of people do. Although with um, sunfish and bluegill, if you get the smaller ones and you get a small enough hook on there, um, that one's missing his tail. No, no, that's just a short one. Okay. Well, usually they, they tear these up. They'll, they'll swallow them whole. This is more for the bass, the bigger ones. Um, I don't like them so much, but I do have the little spinner baits. Um, it depends on how I'm fishing, again. Sometimes you just sort of pull that along the bottom, and a sunfish and a smaller fish will grab it. And there is a bass slammer right there. This one has been around some time. This is the old beetle spin. Beetle spin lures. That is a bass slammer. This thing just sort of pulls along and uh, actually like this, upside down. The silver spoon spins and excites the bass and he bites on that thing. And I've got a lot of little spin baits. So that'll give you an idea. And then I've got the pike 
I don't have a, a steel leader. You have to have a steel leader if you're going to fish for pike. They will destroy your line. They will cut it in half. They're full of razor teeth. They're like the shark of the fresh water. That is a pike bait. Let me see if I can do this without hurting myself. It looks like a fish. It moves and swims like a fish. Actually, it swims like this. Anyway, um, and it's got some wicked sharp hooks on it. And it's a diver. The faster you pull it, the deeper it dives. You pull it slower, and it goes less depth. So that's a that's a that's for the big boys. And then this is what I always call the gut gorer. It's a fish hook retriever. If the fish swallows a hook, um, for little fish and for big fish, you slide that right up inside that line, right along the line. Maybe I'll demonstrate that one day if I get a fish that swallows it. And you get it up in there, and you give it a twist, and you pull that hook right out with no harm to the fish generally. I love this tool. So there it gives you an idea of what I keep with me at all times and this is my main kit right here. You've seen me fishing a lot this is my main kit. You'll see this at my feet all the time and this boy right here and this one right here these where I live now this is what you see me hitting them on again and again and again. I've got a, a, a grasshopper too but he hasn't done me much good. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if there's enough interest for future, I will discuss and do a video series on all the details, uh, comparing different, different weather uh, patterns, different times of the year, and different types of environment, lake, stream, pond, ocean, and whatever, and the type of equipment you need based on where you are. I mean, there's a lot. We can go on and on. I grew up with a fishing pole in my, in my uh, hand before they put a uh, teether in my mouth, I think. That's the way of Michigan. So, I think I came out and said uh, fish. Probably was my first word. Sorry, Mom. But, anyway. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know. And, uh, this is Troy from TR Tech Tactical. And I'll catch you later.